I've been given the honor of introducing our keynote speaker tonight. Uh, she and I have been acquainted for several years now. She was born and reared in Duncan, Oklahoma, and sworn in as Oklahoma's 15th Lieutenant Governor in 2007, giving her a rare distinction of being involved in public service in all three branches of government. She was inducted into the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame in 2001, and I was just informed that yesterday is her birthday. I think we ought to sing happy birthday to her. All right, why don't we do that? Happy your, your birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jerry. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Please, please, Judge, tell him to be seated. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I also appreciate the song. Thanks. I most, I think, mostly appreciate Senator Laster saying it was my 39th birthday. So yeah. thank you, Charlie. I was shooting high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're not good at math. The uh, <laughs> I appreciate the, the opportunity to be here tonight. I was delighted when I got the invitation, and it is always a pleasure to be able to come to a community. Um, at an event where they are recognizing the efforts of others in their community. And uh, community service recognition is, in my opinion, what makes our Oklahoma communities strong, is a recognition that some of the best people we have do things often unrecognized, and, and oftentimes we don't take the time to stop and say thank you um, for the obvious. And so I'm delighted to be here tonight and cannot wait to hear uh, the backgrounds of the other individuals as we heard with Melody Wynn earlier. So uh, thank you for inviting me to be here. I was, um, I was thinking about how patriotism and community service really kind of go hand in hand and, and the American Legion, as Jim said earlier, is such a strong advocate and great example, the Legion and the Auxiliary, for um, patriotic um, opportunities, not just celebrations, but in the programs that they have to educate others. And it made me start thinking, you know, how, how do we as children, how do we first begin to learn about uh, patriotism? And for me, uh, I, I was thinking back that when I was in elementary school, I can remember going to music class every day. And I guess one day a week, my music teacher um, had a flip uh, chart, a very large one, and it had the words to songs on it. And every week, I think it was on Fridays, we would sing the songs that were on that flip chart. And they were all the songs that I now recognize as some of our most patriotic songs, including the songs of our different military branches. And I thought as I had gone to elementary school in grades one through six and had had that opportunity over the years, how each year we learned more songs, and how later, as I was in junior high and high school and would be at other events, all of a sudden I realized I knew those words. I knew those words to songs when they were being played somewhere without thinking about the fact that I had learned them in grade school. And so by the time I was in junior high and high school and would hear those songs and would say those words at that time, I realized that I hadn't just learned them in my head, I'd learned them in my heart as well. And when you can make that transition from having learned something in your head to having remembered it in your heart, I think that's when you begin to understand the meaning of what those words meant and what those songs were about. I also remember that my father, and I remember other men in the community, you know, the men that were those World War II generation, veterans. I can remember when we would be at football games or basketball games or anywhere in our community um, where, and my dad, my dad when I was born didn't have much hair, so I always remember my dad with a hat. And I can remember being places where if we were out of doors and there was an invocation or a pledge of allegiance, I can remember my dad removing his hat and placing his hat over his heart. I can remember not thinking much about it until old enough to look around and realize that the other men in the community were doing the same thing. And as I began to see that happen, I began to learn 
different acts that were in honor of so many patriots of our country. An opportunity that again began to reinforce the words of those songs that I had remembered in my heart. And it was such a great understanding then as some of the other programs that I think are important in helping our children begin to learn about acts of patriotism are the organizations like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and similar organizations that teach you a loyalty oath to God and country, that teach you an oath about service to one another and give you an opportunity to learn at an early age that which our parents and grandparents and those who have served in times of war so eloquently and admirably um, portrayed and volunteered their services for now. So we had opportunities and then and then as was stated when you get to high school if you have that privilege of participating in girl state or boy state uh, you <coughs> learn such such a great civic lesson by participatory democracy. And I, I had that privilege of attending Girl State and I'm really going to visit with Senator Laster before too long because I turned to Charlie before I came up here and said, did you go to Boy State? And he said, no, but I went to Girl State and I'll explain it later. <laughs> so I'm curious. But I could say that since I've been Lieutenant Governor, I've gotten to go to Boy State too. But those are such great opportunities for our young people to learn about what it means to be a patriot, to have patriotism, to have that feeling of belonging to something, and in our case, to our country so strongly that you're willing to fight or do anything that you can to help preserve that loyalty, to preserve the freedoms that that patriotism offers us. We have, we have so many great examples of patriotism and today we had a joint session in the House Chamber, the House and Senate together celebrated Veterans Awareness Day and the Veterans Council for the State of Oklahoma uh, presented a program and, and honored those members of the House and Senate who had served in, uh, as members of our military services. Those individuals who also served on the committees in the House and Senate that have oversight over veterans and military affairs. And the front of the chamber was filled with those veterans who um, were injured and uh, are now members of the DAV. The gallery was full of veterans and members of auxiliary organizations, not just the American Legion Auxiliary, but the VFW Auxiliary as well and others. Those organizations who are formed so that services can be provided, so that contact can be made to assist our veterans upon their return. And Veterans Awareness Day serves as a reminder to those of us who work in Oklahoma City that we have made promises, we have made pledges, that the state of Oklahoma has said there are certain benefits that we will provide to our veterans when they return, such as the seven veterans centers that we have in our state. You know, all of, the, all of those are an expression of our patriotism for those men and women who have served for us. And our veteran centers around Oklahoma, they're all in different kinds of conditions. I've been in some of them and they're not alike. The newest one is actually in southwestern Oklahoma near Lawton, not far from where I live. And when I visit it and then go to Sulphur or Ardmore or some of the others, they are different. And yet these are facilities that the state of Oklahoma has said we want to provide as places in my mind where our veterans have an opportunity to live. They should not be places where they merely exist. So Veterans Awareness Day is an opportunity for the members of the legislature to see the faces of the men and women who are representative of those that the state has said we will help support. And it's a good day. It's a good day when you leave you feel so good about the service of those who have given me the opportunity to be able to run for elective office, who give Senator Lassiter the opportunity to be able to stand up on a House, on a Senate floor and be able to argue for or against legislation because that's what democracy is about, is being able to have that opportunity.